Okay, so the next thing was to, I covered everything that I wanted to cover and pretty much all the parts and pieces for spin and throw are covered in every video so far. There's not much left to do. I did want to cover the disc pivot in spin and throw. So this is an extension of the more snap that I already did before, but I kind of had 10 years to think about it. And also now um, a lot of things have changed as far as the way I look at how to eject the disc. So uh, this we're on a tee box here. And so in spin and throw, the, the one thing that I had to change my own form is I used to have a think thought about being back here and then the throw manifests itself from pointing away from the target to the target. I don't do that anymore at all. I don't think about this position at all. And I don't think the good players do either. I think that's their relaxed part of their throw. Actually, the, the part of the throw that's actually the focus point is where the disc is coming out. And they're actually throwing out throwing out and you see the action of the disc gets curled in so if I'm holding the disc so I got my little baby rock here you see it's got a flag on it so that's gonna be I'm gonna point that that's my pointer to the target okay so if I want to end up back at this position which is my I'm squeezed up right and I'm at 10 o'clock and the disc is rotating and I'm rotating I'm expelling the disc I'm taking the front pointer and I'm gonna rotate that into my chest then I'm gonna take that angle that I've built and I'm going to expel that angle and actually, I'm actually pushing. There is a noticeable push with the thumb. But it's not just a straight push. So this is kind of like what Dan Beto was talking about, like punching straight out. That's true. But we're spinning out of the way also. If you focus too much on punching straight out of your own chest, you'll never get out of your own way. Part of the trick is that you're pushing out, pivoting the disc from the back to the front, back. So with me, it's about 90 degrees. That arrow goes from there to there. That's my disc pivot. I'm taking the CG of the disc and I'm moving it around my wrist. That is a big part of the power. That is snap. That is and at the same time, the forces are going to try to make me curl my wrist. It'll naturally, if once I curl in, once I start to come out, I have to, I have to start unscrewing that angle. There is a noticeable amount of push. So you feel like you're, it's kind of like throwing a jab in, in the, I think if you watch Paul Macbeth, you will see that he is jabbing and rotating at the same time. So there's two motions. It's going straight out from his chest, and his chest is rotating. So it looks like that. He's actually getting out of his own way and punching out at the same time. So people have asked me about the thumb placement and my grip. Whatever lets me get as much outward push leverage as I can possibly get, that's a good grip. However that works for you. If you want to hold it like that and you can do that. If you want to have your thumb way in here, if you want to have your thumb way out here, which probably that won't work. It's actually kind of halfway. Like I think you'll see most of the good players are basically just grabbing that rim and pushing down with that thumb and they're opposing each other. That's the very common grip. So I would go to the end of the tee box this is where I want to end up. Right there. Right there. Rotating. I'm not thinking about this position at all. I don't care. I don't think about that at all. I'm thinking about the throw out part.
So that was my first throw of the day. But those were a little low, but they were piped right at the basket. So that's pretty much it.